Okay, welcome back to the uh, second hour of the show this evening on Talk Sport across the nation, Northern Europe, and everywhere else. This is the James Whale Radio Show. Now, uh, tonight we'll be talking to Robert Bouval, who uh, is the author of The Secret Chamber, The Quest for the Hall of Records. On the 31st of December 1999, the Egyptian Antiquities Authorities were scheduled to open, and we've spoken about this before, a sealed door under the Great Pyramid of Giza. Some researchers believe that behind these doors lies an archive of the founders of the civilization that created the Sphinx and built the uh, monuments of Egypt. To this date, uh, they still remain unopened. Robert Bavale, in his new book, The Secret Chamber, uh, has attempted to answer the mysteries behind one of history's most closely guarded secrets. He's with me now. Good evening, Robert. Good evening, James. Now, listen, Robert, first of all, I have to say, I can't remember, because my, my, as you get older, your mind seems to get worse and worse. Uh, I was talking, who were we interviewing the other day? Uh, when I was up in, in, in Bradford, those two guys who've written this new book, who say oh. any... Uh, Bob Lomas. Yeah. He yeah. says that the, it was the... Uh, Scots, anyway, who uh, who invented the building of the pyramids. Uh, yes, uh, I, I actually I know Bob Lomas quite well, uh, and uh, frankly, I mean I I find the idea rather odd, mm. but uh, he does have some evidence to suggest that there was a type of uh, megalithic measurement mm. which uh, might have been exported to Egypt. Uh, whether this uh, proves or shows that uh, that the Scots somehow got involved with the design of the pyramids is something else altogether. Uh, to be honest, I'm not very convinced at all. But it's it's the thing with the pyramid of Egypt is that it attracts uh, as many theories yeah. as there are authors and. Uh, I've been involved with the Great Pyramid for uh, over 20 years. Now, and, you, were, you were brought up in Egypt, weren't you? I have. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I mean, so you've lived with the, 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 the pyramids and everything else. I, I indeed, I have, yes. And I think um, uh, perceived wisdom has changed about what the pyramids were when they were built. Everything has changed quite a lot in the last 50 years or so, hasn't it? Indeed. Uh, what do we believe now, then? Well, perhaps it's, it's, it's important to say what, what, uh, what was we believed for a long time. Yeah. Uh, since Egyptology became a science in the 1820s, uh, the uh, dominant belief among uh, scholars is that the pyramids were tombs, and, and just that. Uh, gigantic tombs, but nonetheless tombs. This theory doesn't hold so well these days. Uh, the, the, there is mounting evidence that they served a, uh, multiple functions, uh, and therefore they're, if they're tombs, they're certainly not tombs only. Uh, the general belief, and I'm part of that, uh, that mm. new movement, is that they had a function, uh, a religious function, probably related to the death of the king, but, uh, but that some rituals were performed uh, within the pyramids, outside the pyramids, and around the pyramids. Uh, and these rituals had to do with a, uh, the, the belief that the, king of, the kings of Egypt uh, were to take a journey after death, uh, and travel to the sky and, and become part of the, 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 the gods. So it is through this uh, I function that we have to explain the pyramid. Now, you, uh, do you subscribe to any of the views and any of the people who've written many books now about some kind of uh, extraterrestrial link with the pyramids? Uh, the, the short of the answer is no. Uh, I mean... Uh, uh, the, uh, the idea came uh, in the early days in the, uh, of this kind of investigation, 1967. The proponent of this theory is uh, uh, a, the, the famous Swiss-German uh, uh, author called mm. Eric von Däniken. That's right. Who wrote *The Chariot of the Gods*. I've actually met Eric von Däniken several times. Mm. Uh, but he's, I have, and he's, a, he's a, a strange, unusual man. But unfortunately, got caught. Um, uh, fabricating some of the evidence, didn't he? You know, uh, I've met Eric myself uh, the first time in '93, and like you, I find him a rather unusual man, but uh, more down to earth than I expected. Uh, he himself told me something which is quite true. Uh, when he wrote uh, Chariot of the Gods, he was in his uh, middle 20s, I think. And uh, at the time, he was working as a uh, as a uh, manager for a, for an hotel in the in the food and beverage section. And uh, really, he 
at the time didn't expect his book to become such an enormous uh, bestseller uh, and, and being translated mm. in Gondosamite languages. So, you know, he plodded along happily and produced this manuscript and, and there it was published. With every new idea uh, that's put on, 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 uh, on paper, you're bound to make some errors. And I think it was grossly misinterpreted, in my view, that he fudged the, uh, mm. the information. Uh, the, you know, but that's the name of the game, you know. I've, I've lived it for, for over 15 years now, since I published my own theories. And uh, believe me, I've, I've, I've heard it all. So I think one has to be a bit generous with, with people right. and, and accept that no. errors are made. Okay, I, I'm, I'm looking through you, the, the, the hardback cover of your book that you've just given me, because in, in, in the paperback there aren't these photographs. Um, and there's some, uh, there's some amazing photographs here, uh, particularly of you inside one of the, uh, the pyramids. Now, I've never been to see the pyramids. I've never been there at all. I've certainly never been inside them. What is it actually like when you go in? I mean, and not to the touristy places, but when you go in some of the places that you've been allowed to go in in these pyramids. Mm. What's the atmosphere like? Very spooky. Uh, the, the most impressive pyramid, of course, is the so-called Great Pyramid. Mm. Uh, it's the largest in the world. Uh, you, it has a very, very bizarre internal system. Indeed, it's the only pyramid in Egypt and, uh, and around the world, actually, that has uh, a whole series of corridors and chambers and galleries uh, within the, the, the core of the pyramid. Uh, most of the other pyramids have underground uh, chambers. But this one uh, is, is full of these, uh, these strange uh, chambers mm. inside. Uh, it's it, the places that normally tourists cannot go uh, is uh, one of the places the so-called subterranean chamber and you uh, you enter the pyramid from the northern face and you descend uh, seemingly forever into a very very uh, narrow tunnel you, you have to crouch uh, to go down and uh, it's, uh, it's approximately 600 feet uh, below ground yeah, and you emerge into a very very bizarre uh, place it literally feels like hell it, it gives you the impression that uh, that you're in the bowels of the earth uh, and no one knows really what this chamber's uh, purpose was I mean, what is in there anything in there or? well there is a, it's very roughly cut. Uh, they obviously intended to have had a few uh, platforms. Mm. One looks a bit like a, uh, a sort of throne, uh, a large seat. Uh, and then there is a bizarre well uh, with, uh, in the center of the chamber. Uh, it's just a feeling that you get that you're in some sort of... Uh, some sort of place where something odd happens. You know, it, it defies logic. Mm. Uh, then, as some you, sort of execution chamber? Or? I, no, no, I don't think so. No. But certainly rituals mm. and, and very strange rituals they might have been. Uh, like I said earlier, they, they obviously had to do with with the rebirth of the king. And uh, there are many clues as to what they might have done there in texts that were uh, that are known as the pyramid texts. Uh, these give the indication that the the, the rituals involved uh, had to do with probably taking the mummy of the king, the, the, the corpse of the king, and, and performing rituals that uh, ultimately, they believed, would transfer the soul of the king to the stars. So God knows what he did there, but you get this <laughs> eerie feeling, you get this sort of uh, you know, goose, goose, goose yeah. pimples, you know. And, uh, but, and there was nothing, no evidence of anything, no bones, nothing at all to... to... You know, the funny thing about the Great Pyramid, and indeed all the pyramids at Giza, is that they're uh, totally bare. Nothing has ever been found in them at all. Uh, the other weird thing is that they do not contain any inscriptions. Mm. Uh, and hence all the theories that, uh, that are developed, simply because we uh, uh, strangely know very little about them from the people who build them. Uh, so it's one of those great mysteries that, that the largest uh, monuments, the, these, uh, these universally known monuments, uh, uh, are, are totally, totally uh, empty, or seemingly empty. I mean, do you think there's anything within the? Uh, we'll we'll get on to the the the, uh, the the point of the book, the secret chamber, in a bit. But I mean, in in all of these these pyramids, and you've been in all of them, I think. I have. Uh, is there any any one? I mean, is this is is it? Do you think like a folly? that was built by somebody for no real reason and they built all these wonderful things with marvellous chambers but they had no real idea of what they were going to use them for anyway. 
Uh, no, it's, this is very unlikely. Uh, if you if you see the pyramids, mm. uh, it's pretty clear that these people had a very very uh, uh, definite objective in mind. Do you think there uh, were other pyramids that were used, and for some reason they 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 disappeared or? Oh yes, yes. yes. I mean, the pyramids are still being found in Egypt. Mm. I mean, uh, hardly a few years ago, uh, some pyramids were discovered buried under the sand. Small ones, but nonetheless pyramids. Uh, so you know. There might still be some some pyramids uh, covered by sand. Is there any chance that there are, are chambers and, and places within the Great Pyramids now that have not yet been discovered? Very much so. Uh, perhaps I should give a bit of the background to this. Uh, the pyramid has been explored from bottom to top and from top to bottom mm. uh, since the... Uh, well, since, since antiquities, the first people to explore the pyramid were uh, the Arabs. Uh, they, they, they went treasure hunting, if you like, and uh, they busted into the pyramid in, uh, in the ninth century. Uh, the pyramid was closed by, by, uh, from its main entrance mm. by huge granite plugs. You just couldn't get in. Mm. Uh, the, only, the only place you could enter is the subterranean chamber, which I explained earlier. We know that the Romans went in. Uh, but beyond that, in the upper parts of the pyramid, this was closed. Uh, the Arabs, by sheer luck, they used battering rams and, and, uh, and, and pickaxes and whatnot. And by sheer luck, uh, cut into the what we call the ascending corridor. And uh, they scrambled within the interior of the pyramids. And uh, as far as we can make out from the records, they found absolutely nothing. All they found... Uh, which is still there, is in the so-called king's chamber, that's at the very heart of the pyramid, uh, an empty coffer. Uh, now, the Egyptologists have jumped to the conclusion that this is a, uh, a coffin, uh, but it might not have been. It might have been a ritualistic coffin, uh, so the, hence the debate over whether it served the function of a burial or not. Uh, from then on, uh, many, many people explored the pyramids. And in modern times, uh, the pyramid has been explored mostly, surprisingly, by English people. Uh, or Scots, mm. since we're on the subject. <laughs> in fact, the most, the most prolific exploration was conducted by the Astronomer Royal of Scotland, mm. uh, a gentleman called uh, Piazzi Smythe who, in fact, put forward many theories himself. He's the one who, who in fact, uh, kicked off this idea that the pyramid was a kind of prophetic machine mm. uh, linked to the Bible, which, of course, is heavily discounted by, uh, by, uh, by scholars. But the, it, it, there is no doubt, though, that the, uh, the early Egyptians knew more about the, the heavens and more about uh, stars and planets and things than we did. I mean, it's just now beginning uh, to be recognized as a fact that there are more planets than we could see with the naked eye or with, uh, with our telescopes. Yeah, well the Egyptians were uh, avid observers of the skies mm. uh, and, and certainly those who built the pyramids uh, for the very simple reason that the pyramids, and particularly the Great Pyramid, uh, is aligned to the, to the astronomical directions with incredible precision. Uh, the papers were full of it, by the way, today. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed. I know. Uh, where uh, an Egyptologist, Kate Spence, mm. put forward a, a rather interesting theory uh, as to how they might have aligned uh, the Great Pyramids and, and other pyramids. Uh, she established that they might have... Hang, hang on, just before you, you tell us that, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back, Robert. Sure. Uh, also, I want to get to the crux of the book as well, which is about the secret chamber. If you have a question for Robert, you can call 08700 60 or email us on talksport.net. You're listening to Talksport, the James well show back after this. I don't know how you get that sort of uh, bluegrass bayou music or whatever along with a bit of classical singing from uh, Works well. Russell. Very nice, very nice. You should do it. Uh, right, welcome back. My guest this evening is Robert Bouval, who is the author of The Secret Chamber and uh, a man who spent many years of his life investigating the pyramids in Egypt. Uh, Robert, who now lives in, in England, uh, was brought up... You were brought up in Egypt, weren't you? I was born in yeah, Egypt and brought up yeah. in Egypt, yes. Now, let's, listen, uh, there have been stories today, you're absolutely right, in the papers where uh, an Egyptologist from, uh, she wasn't from Scotland, was she? No, no, no Cambridge. Um, has come up with a new idea as to why they were there and, and how they're aligned. You t tell us about it. Yes, well, her idea is, is in fact, not very new. Uh, she uh, used a phenomenon we call the precession of the equinoxes. And before you switch off, 
uh, let me make it as simple as possible. Mm. Uh, most of us uh, from our school days know very well that the, that the planet uh, uh, on which we, we live has uh, two motions. Uh, one is that it uh, rotates on its, uh, uh, revolves on its axis, and we get the effects of night and day. And the other is, of course, uh, the, uh, the revolution of the planet around the sun, and we get the effects of the seasons in 365 days. What most people don't know is that this planet that we're on wobbles, mm. and wobbles very slowly, uh, in cycles of 26,000 years. And this is called the precession of the equinoxes. And because of this wobble, uh, the position of stars appear to change over time. In fact, it isn't the stars that change, it is our, our own motion that gives us this impression. Does that have any, any effect, do you think, on our, our, um, <clears throat> our climate change or anything else? Or it's and... part of the, uh, the uh, complex mechanism mm. of, of, uh, of changes in climate, but over long periods. Mm. I mean, there, there, is, there is various theories that the precession is part, not entirely, mm. but it's part of ice ages, for example. Well, I, I've spoken, it wasn't you, but I, I've spoken to someone who wrote a book saying, that, calling this the ice planet, the, I think the book was called The Ice Planet, and uh, saying that this is a planet that is primarily of ice and snow. Indeed. And we're living just in between an ice age. Indeed. And, uh, and uh, what happens is, uh, is that because of this precession, and various other s factors, but the precession causes uh, slowly, the mm. wobble causes, um, because it wobbles, it's a bit like having your, your, your car wheel out of alignment. And eventually, if you don't put it right, it's going to shake so much that it's going to rattle your engine. Do we know uh, how, how close to one sort of uh, one, one, one 26,000 year cycle we are, whether we're in the middle or coming up to the end of it or whatever? Well, it's a perpetual cycle. It's so a it perpetual, depends, so you, yeah. It depends yeah. when you start it. But yeah. uh, as far as the ice ages, uh, according to a lot of people, we're due for one pretty soon. <laughs> well, and apparently, the interesting thing, I was talking about this the other day, Robert, is that apparently Currently, uh, before an ice age happens, the planet warms up. Yes. Uh, it needs to warm up to actually uh, cause the ice to melt. <laughs> and then it freezes over and whatever, yeah. yeah. Uh, there is even more radical theories related to ice ages that the wobble, uh, as part of, of the factors, mm. causes the, uh, the uh, Earth, the, the crust of the, the ice to, 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 to finally give and use chunks uh, fall into the sea. Mm. And we get, Which we've got uh, at the moment, of course. Indeed. Yeah. And uh, there's already some, some signs of something right. that is happening. And then there is an enormous uh, increase in sea level uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that infringes on, on, on the coastline. So all these, but, you know, we're talking about processes that take a long time. And, you know, yeah, don't frighten on, anybody. You know, we, we just go and rush and, 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 and build yeah. a, uh, a shelter. Maybe but, a pyramid uh, was built to avoid an ice age that they thought was coming. No, no, you know, there is many theories about, like I said, about mm. why the pyramids were built, and among them the Scots, you know, as we heard before. One has to stay within the context that we're dealing with. And uh, there is no doubt in, in my mind, and, in, and, and this goes in line with the established uh, academic view, that the pyramids were built by pharaohs in order to serve as a religious function. Uh, we have all the evidence to support this. There are, there are, there are religious texts that speak of, 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 of these, uh, these beliefs mm. and so forth. And let me return a bit to, um, to this idea that uh, uh, Kate Spence, for example, uh, discussed in the, uh, in the, in, 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 in the newspapers mm -hmm. today. Uh, the pyramid texts are rather clear, if one, if one is able to interpret them, that the destination of kings in their afterlife was to do with the stars. Uh, and they specifically give us certain directions to look at. Uh, they, they, they speak a lot about the stars of Orion, for example, uh, where they believe that Orion was the uh, home of their uh, god of resurrection, mm. called Osiris. And it is in this region of the sky that they believe that the kings, after they die, their souls somehow would, would, would travel to these stars. Uh, the other region, which uh, now comes to, to, to Kate Spence, is the northern region of the sky, or the, the region we call the circumpolar region. Uh, now, f most people would know that this region is where the so-called pole star uh, or, or celestial pole is. Now, this, this is clear in the pyramid texts. And strangely enough, uh, and unsurprisingly, uh, the pyramid is predominantly aligned to those two directions north and south, with an incredible degree of precision. 
Now, it's been known since the uh, middle 60s, uh, since 1964, that uh, certain uh, passageways within the pyramid, uh, known as, they used to be known as air shafts, in fact, we call them star shafts now, uh, within the Great Pyramid and em emanating from the two internal chambers, there's two chambers, the so-called Queen's Chamber and the King's Chamber. Emanating from these chambers uh, are, from each chamber, are two shafts, uh, and they point they, they pierce the pyramid, uh, two, two sets pierce the pyramid. The ones in the, in the so-called Queen's Chamber do not pierce the pyramid, nonetheless, appear to shoot out like gun, gun barrels, if you like, towards the stars. Now, in 1964, uh, it was determined uh, by some astronomers and, and, uh, and an Egyptologist, very much like Kate Spence has, that uh, the, uh, the sudden shaft emanating from the King's Chamber pointed to Orion's belt, this is this is a, three stars that that are very very bright and uh, are, are very visible. Uh, one of the brightest constellations in the sky, especially at this time of year. You can see them if you're if you're willing to go out at the, in this cold and they appear in the southern sky. Uh, now this is interesting because we knew from the text that the king uh, objective was to fly or his soul to fly to those stars and and settle there in his afterlife. Uh, the other shafts have sim destinations to stars and similarly ritualistic stars. The ones in the north uh, seem to point to the celestial pole and particularly to one star which I showed in, uh, in, in the uh, early 90s to be one star called Kochab which is in the small bear. It is this star that Kate Spence has used to uh, argue her case in terms of the alignment of the, of the pyramids. And she cleverly noticed uh, that the star uh, reaches uh, its upper culmination uh, in, in, in due north when it is directly above another star, which also does the same uh, in the lower part of, of, uh, of the vertical line. So she assumed that they might have aimed at this, this two stars yeah. at the same time. And if she's right, she's, she's broken into a, a very interesting code here. But let me return to the southern stars with uh, shafts, which I find more interesting in terms of the function of the pyramid. Uh, following this uh, investigation done in 64, I got rather interested as to why they were so uh, specifically aligned to these stars. Uh, and I was intrigued by something about the pyramid themselves on the ground. Uh, there are three pyramids at Giza, as most people know. Two very large ones, and another one which is much smaller than the other two. Uh, the two large ones seem to be aligned along their diagonal uh, line, uh, going southwest. Uh, the third one is strangely offset from this line, uh, so you get this, this strange map on the ground. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a, of, of a weird coincidence, but uh, I, I focused on this, this strange layout of the pyramids. And, uh, and one night, I happened to be with a friend of mine in, uh, in the desert. I was living in Saudi Arabia at the time, working as an engineer. And this friend of mine was talking about this constellation. He was a navigator, and he mentioned that you could use these three stars and push a line downwards and locate the, another bright star, which was used by Navigator, the star Sirius. And then he said that, in fact, the three stars were not in perfect alignment, mm. that the third one, which was much smaller, was offset. Uh, and it hit me that the pattern of these three stars uh, were exactly the same as the pattern of the, of the three pyramids. And this became known as the Orion Correlation Theory. I eventually published this in, uh, in a book form which incidentally, if you remember, you interviewed me. I do, I do. And, uh, and Listen, hang know. on there for a moment. We must take another break. It's, it, this is fascinating. We haven't actually even begun to get into well, the book of the Secret Chamber, but we'll save that for the last bit. Uh, 0870 Apologies to the people who are waiting to speak to Robert. We will get to the calls in a few moments. I promise back after this. James Whale on Talks Force. You're going to get such a smack in a few moments. Uh, it's 11.35. 
Uh, Sir Roy James, thank you. Uh, Robert Bouval is my uh, guest tonight. He's uh, he's a fascinating man, and uh, if you, like me, are fascinated about uh, Egypt, what the pyramids for and everything else, uh, whether it has anything to do with UFOs and uh, extraterrestrials or not, and uh, uh, Robert's one of the guys who thinks probably not, uh, but certainly there were things going on um, around the pyramids that we haven't really got to the bottom of, really. No. Uh, and perhaps we won't. Now, uh, we've got... Um, Graham Hancock coming in, and you, you want to, you're going to come in with him, actually, now? Yes, I hope yeah. to come with him when you have him, uh, I think, in a, in a week or so. Uh, and uh, I'd like to tell the viewers uh, who may have been following the uh, enormous debate uh, concerning uh, the Horizon programs uh, that were broadcasted last year to get in touch with Graham Hancock through his website, www.grahamhancock uh, at virgin.net. Uh, you'll find you'll find all the latest news there. It's very interesting because they're going to re rebroadcast the Horizon program in the future, indeed, uh, with uh, some adjustments that you have insisted that they make on it. Well, that the Broadcasting Standard Commission has insisted. Well, exactly, yeah, right. because you weren't happy with what they said. Let's, listen, because we'll we'll be out of time before long, um, and you're going to come back in again. Let's let's get to the secret chamber. Uh, there have been many people who wanted to talk about this secret chamber, whether it's under the Sphinx, whether it's in the wherever it is. The Egyptian authorities won't allow anyone to have a license to investigate. Lots of cynics, myself included, think that probably they've been in there and nicked all the stuff or somebody. I mean, you know, surely somebody's been in there. Who knows? Um, is, it, is it really as important? It, oh, yes, indeed. Um, and how could you get such a large book about it when so far nobody's been in there? Well, my book investigates the uh, two things. One is whether there is historical evidence to suggest the existence of such a chamber mm. and, uh, and I go into great detail in the first part and I conclude that there is uh, the Egyptians um, speaking in their texts uh, are very very adamant that there is um, a chamber somewhere in, at Giza we know for example one of the, 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 the most interesting uh, part of evidence uh, I've seen it myself is in a papyrus kept at the Berlin Museum. It's known as the Westcar papyrus. Uh, and uh, in this papyrus, there's a very strange story narrated uh, by uh, the scribe, uh, speaking of the time when the pyramid was being built. Uh, and it talks about a magician visiting the court of the king. And uh, the king inquires uh, where the secret chamber of the god Thoth. Now, the god Thoth was regarded by the Egyptians as having brought down the wisdom of the gods and invented writing and inscribed this wisdom on tablets or in books and concealed them in a secret chamber. And uh, it seems from the papyrus that the king who built the pyramid, the, uh, the great pyramid, wanted to have the contents of this chamber in order that he could put them somewhere either in the pyramid or somewhere near the pyramid. Now, Egyptology dismissed this as sort of uh, ancient science fiction, but uh, I don't. Uh, the Egyptians have, uh, particularly the Egyptians who build the pyramids, keep on surprising us. Every time we think there's a myth, it turns out to be reality. Mm. Uh, they, they, they've spoken about the stars, and there you go, we realize that the pyramids are aligned to stars and specific stars. They speak about Egypt being in, in the image of the sky, and there you go, we find that Egypt and the pyramids are a pattern of the sky, as I've explained earlier, mm -hmm. and so forth. And why not this chamber? Now, there is much reason to believe uh, from scientific investigation, we're not talking now about uh, textual speculation, uh, that there is a possible chamber within the Great Pyramid. And you see, I haven't been there, and I just assumed that surely these have been found. Surely every inch of these pyramids must have been uh, looked at by now. Actually, not. Uh, we've looked at all the internal system, but the internal system comprises something like perhaps five or six percent of the volume of the pyramid. Uh, it is, has been calculated that if the Egyptians wanted, they could have placed hundreds of chambers inside the pyramid and we still wouldn't know about them. There is enough volume in this pyramid to put hundreds of chambers. Uh, now, the, cham the place most likely uh, to have a chamber uh, was explored in uh, 1993 
uh, and, uh, by a German engineer called Rudolf Gantbrig. As a matter of fact, for those interested, Rudolf Gantbrig was at my home a few days ago, and we were talking about all this all over again. Uh, I've been very much involved with this, uh, this event since uh, its early days. Uh, what happened is that Rudolf uh, Gantbrig uh, decided that he would uh, explore the uh, so-called shafts inside the Queen's Chamber. Now, there's a very strange background to these shafts. Uh, they were not known to exist before 1872. And the reason is, is that they did not penetrate within the chamber. They were discovered by, by an English engineer. Of course. Uh, from Newcastle, mm. let's be precise. Uh, so never, not very far from Scotland. <laughs> and, uh, but he's English. Uh, yeah, in, but he is English, yeah. Yes, in 1872. Mm. Uh, a fellow called Wayman Dixon. And... Uh, but since then, the Egyptologists were convinced that these particular shafts were abandoned, that they served no purpose whatsoever. Mm. Uh, Rudolf Canterbury didn't think so. And surprisingly, uh, in parallel with him, and I didn't know him at the time, I didn't think so either. Uh, me for different reasons. Because I had found that they were aligned to stars and all the reasons that they had a function. In any case, he explored these, uh, these shafts in March 1993 with a miniature uh, robot. And he demonstrated first that the shafts were much longer than had been assumed. They, 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 the, the, the one he explored, the southern shaft, goes about 60 meters into the core of the pyramid. They were previously thought to go just a few meters. But more interestingly, uh, at the end of the shaft, he came across a door, complete with two handles. It's, it's, uh, uh, now these shafts are the size of what? You... The size of a little window, if you yeah, like. Okay. Uh, uh, Not big enough to crawl in. No, no, and hence why they were never explored. Okay. The only way we can get through them is, is using... These are little robots they use in the pipes. That's they, 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 look, they call them ferrets. I don't know what they call them, but his looks like uh, a sort of miniature tank. Yeah, okay. So he sent uh, it up He sent it up through the... He sent uh, it up there, and he actually filmed uh, what, 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 he, what the robot saw and, and, and what came through this film. It's an amazing sight. The, the machine ended up uh, at the end of the shaft... <laughs> And what, what was seen, and in fact it was broadcast several times on television, was a s small slab. It looks like a sliding door, uh, complete with two little handles, two copper handles. Everything implies, uh, to me and to him, that this is a, a, a something that can be lifted upwards. And if it can, then there must be something behind it. Uh, he is utterly convinced now, and he's writing a book about this, by the way, uh, a lot of people should be interested in that, where he uh, will reveal uh, his findings uh, that there is definitely a chamber behind this... Uh, has he opened this door yet? Yeah? No. No, I can quite assure you that he has not. And, uh, can you get permission to do... How do you get permission? I mean, you're Egyptian. I mean, they'll never give me permission. They I, won't give I, you permission? Oh, no, I'm, the, uh, I'm their, uh, the, the black sheep of the family in this one because I, I, I'm the one who broke the news of this door uh, to, to, the, to the British press. But the Egyptians don't like that. They didn't like that at all. But uh, the Egyptians want to keep everything... They, they, it seems, and I don't know, maybe I'm unfair, but it seems the Egyptians do not want any more known about the pyramids than is already known. They want them left there as they are as tourist attractions, but they really don't want anybody finding out anymore. Well, when you say the Egyptians, uh, let's be a bit more specific. Uh, we're dealing with the Antiquity Department, yeah. and in this particular case, we're dealing with the Directorate of the Giza Plateau. Uh, I have been in conflict with the, with the Director of the Giza Plateau for many years, it's well known. Uh, I've hit the, the, the Egyptian newspaper on uh, the front pages several times for having uh, criticized and attacked him. Uh, the reason I feel so strong about uh, th this matter is that uh, this gentleman seems to be absolutely convinced that he knows it all. And because he's adamant uh, that there is nothing to be discovered there, uh, it's a kind of catch-22. Uh, he won't allow people because there's nothing there. And, and here we are with, a, with an incredible situation where a door has been found in the most mysterious of monuments. But if, uh, if I'm to believe what, what eventually you're saying in your book, if we, if we actually find out this secret chamber or the Hall of Records, mm -hmm. then it could change people's perception on the history of mankind. I believe, yes, if such a thing exists... Uh, and, and like I say... But how book, are you? Are you 10% are you sure? 80% sure? I, uh, I would say that I'm about 70% sure that there is uh, some sort of cache 
or, or, or secret chamber, let's call it what you like, within the pyramid. And in fact, I would even wager that there is a similar chamber underneath the Sphinx. Okay. There, yeah. well, I've got to take another break. Um, what does the... I'm going to ask you the question. It's, it's in one of your press releases, and I'll come back. And then I will definitely take calls. 0870 40, 50, 60. I want to know the answer to what does the second coming of Christ have to do with the opening of the fabled Hall of Records oh after okay. this? We'll get to the calls right after this. Uh, with me is Robert Bouval, and Robert's coming back um, with... Uh, I can never remember Hancock's first name, you know? Graham, Graham, Graham. Hancock. I, I will call him Herbie Hancock, and then go into some music. But, yeah, Graham Hancock. Uh... Robert's book is called The Secret Chamber, The Quest for the Hall of the Records. It's a fascinating book. It's got some great photographs in. Uh, before we go to the course, I just want to, uh, this question, which well, fascinates me anyway. Um, why does everybody, well, not everybody, but lots of people think if this, um, if this Hall of Records is found, then uh, we're going to know something about the, uh, the second coming of Christ? Well, uh, let me be uh, very brutal here. I don't believe that we're going to know anything about the second coming of Christ or anybody's second coming. Uh, however, the reason that a lot of people believe that uh, is uh, mainly to do uh, with uh, one, like I said earlier, the uh, biblical theories of Piazzi Smythe, who associated the pyramid as being a biblical prophetic machine. Mm. In short, that every um, dimension sort of uh, speaks of a, of, a, of a prophecy. And uh, he concluded, among other things, that, uh, that the, um, the final objective of this pyramid is to predict the second coming of Christ. He had a huge following, believe it or not. I mean, uh, there was an enormous movement at the time, in the 1860s. Mm. Uh, later on, uh, much closer to us, uh, this idea was put forward by an American psychic called Edgar Cayce. Uh, and again, Casey has, although he died in 1945, uh, made a prediction that a chamber would be found under the Sphinx and that in this chamber would be found these records and that these records have something to do uh, with the second coming of Christ. So there you are. These are the sort of uh, reasons why there's such a following. But uh, You don't believe it? No, I don't. I mean, it's it's, but it's interesting to to follow the 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 the, the, the phenomena, if you like. Okay. And hence, I discuss this quite a lot in my book. Hmm. Right. Let's take some calls. Put your headphones on. Does it pair there? Uh, Phil is in Crobra. Uh, if you want to join us, oh eight seven hundred forty fifty sixty. We take calls now. Phil, you're on the air. Hi. Hello, Phil. In what you're saying. About uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, Phil. For some strange reason, we're getting the calls coming in halfway through, Ash. Uh, can you check that out? Yeah. Okay, Phil. Right. About 30 years ago, I bought a, a, a box of old books, and one of them is Travels of Upper and Lower Egypt, uh, the division of the French army during the campaign of General Bonaparte by Vivant Denion, 1803. And I find it very interesting because there's all pull-out maps of the hieroglyphics and the, uh, and the tombs. Um, I, 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 have you read the book yourself? I have seen it, yes. You're yes. speaking of Vivant uh, Denon, who was the uh, artist who accompanied uh, Bonaparte on, his, right, uh, yes. on the expedition. Uh, in fact, uh, on, on his return to France, Vivant Denon published an enormous work called Description de l'Egypte, which has become a sort of bestseller uh, oh. in its days. And in this Description de l'Egypte, uh, there are wonderful, wonderful plates. And, uh, they are here, yes, I'm yes. looking at them now. Uh, what I was interested in is, it, it, it written in English, but there seems to be an F. The whole plane sparkled, but it's got an F instead of an S. Come again? Um, uh, uh, what I'm interesting is, it's written in English, yes. but it's got here, like I I in one of the pages, the whole plane, instead of sparkled with um, arms, it's got FP, part sparkled or something. Mm -hmm. it, everything seems to have got an S. Um, oh. oh, yeah, well, uh, I it's... I can't understand that. Yes, no, it's the way that they used to type uh, oh, the, yes. in, in those days. It's so interesting, cause, <laughs> because the... Um, <laughs> Not a mystery, no. <laughs> so it's like the Antiques Roadshow. What do you want to know next, um, Phil, is how much is the book worth? Oh, no, so. no, I've had it for 30 years. <laughs> Listen, um, if it's worth a few thousand pounds, it might be worth selling it, but I don't think it is. No. Is it? Um, Unless you want to donate it to me, I'll accept it with pleasure. <laughs> well, um, yeah, what I was interested in is... 
when I was watching the television of the, the pyramids in Egypt, they looked so different on these pull-out pull, uh, um, kind of maps. So obviously that, that, that they've deteriorated, haven't they? Yes. And, yes. Uh, well, uh, when Napoleon got there, uh, the pyramids, uh, uh, the larger part of the lower part of the pyramids was buried in sand. Hence why they look so different today. All this has been cleared. Uh, and then, since then, by the way, uh, the pyramids have been uh, battered, if you like, by explorers. Uh, again, coming to a... Most of them from this country, I Most of them from this country. There was a very famous or infamous Colonel, Colonel Howard Weiss, a military man who, for some reason, went to explore the pyramids and used gunpowder to, to blast his way through. <laughs> so, hence the damage on the Great Pyramid, unfortunately. No wonder the Egyptians don't really want us going uh, kicking around anymore, you know. I think you'll have a hard time going through customers with gunpowder these days. But... <laughs> okay, thank you, Phil. Let's go to Russell in Aberdeen. Yeah, Russell, you're on the air. Hi, I um, just wanted to ask Robert, uh, can you give me a date, roughly, for when the first pyramids in Egypt were erected? Why? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we're talking about the Third Dynasty pyramids, uh, and the very, very first pyramid that uh, seems to have been erected is the so-called Pyramid of Zoser in Saqqara. Uh, er, the date that is generally accepted is about 2700 BC, but uh, some think it's a bit earlier, about 2,650 or so. So th that's the kind of dates we have for this pyramid. Long time ago, Russell, really, I would have said. Uh, Wayne in London, you're on the air. Hi, Wayne. Hello, James. How are you doing? Yeah, good, Wayne. Uh, and, well, I am a stonemason, a marble and stonemason, and in my trade, I studied... Uh, I had to study my history uh through through uh like early man when he kind of yeah get to the point wayne right um egyptology Egypt, egyptology is based on what we know from the do you have a question for robert wayne or are you just going to sort of prattle on like this for half an hour no my, my question is that the uh, the pyramids weren't built by the egyptians they were built by a pre-existing empire well there's been that theory and uh i am not an advocate of that one but it's still open for debate uh, the pyramids to me seem, I mean, I've, I've seen them so many times and I've explored them so many times and uh, one cannot escape the, uh, the conclusion that they were built by Egyptians. The big question is when? And, uh, and this is more interesting to me. And they may have been built in an epoch or at least started in an epoch which is before, i.e. the so-called Egyptian civilization. So these are big questions that are being debated and uh, particularly uh, discussed in, in books written by my co-author Graham Hancock. But I, I think it's, uh, it's clear to me, uh, and I'm sorry to disappoint a lot of people on this one, that the, it is the native people of Egypt who build this pyramid. Now, uh, I, I don't dispute that. I'm no. not disputing that. Sorry. No. I, I, no. I don't dispute the Egyptians built the pyramids as we understand the Egyptians, like North Africans. Uh, it wasn't called Africa then. Uh, yeah. But... but the people that actually built the the pyramids were not the same people who built the Sphinx. Ah, okay. I, I can see your question. Well, well, uh, I can't. What, what is this sort of? Um, <coughs> I mean, they were they the same, around about the same time, but they were they were for different reasons, weren't they? I think uh, what is being put uh, to question here is that there has been a theory proposed by an American uh, researcher, a very good friend of mine, John West who argued that the erosion on the Sphinx indicates that it is much older than the pyramids, and therefore that it was built by some earlier civilization which has been lost and that we have, uh, haven't yet detected. Uh, this is an interesting theory because, uh, as you may or may not know from my work, that I've concluded the same uh, with Graham Hancock using astronomy. So there are two sciences that strongly suggests that the Sphinx may be far older than we think and therefore raises a huge question because the date that we propose is before the Egyptian civilization. Okay. Wayne, thank you very much indeed. We're going to take a little news break. I know we were only going to go to midnight. Can you, can you just spare maybe 10 minutes after the news? And, and Great pleasure. James. What? Now, I heard this last <laughs> week that the pyramids were actually invented, the, the way of building them in Scotland. We talked about that. Hey, 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 Ash, don't show yourself up, please. 
We well, never talked about that. We talked about that. Now you're hallucinating, man. We'll be back with Robert McVale. Robert's book is called The Secret Chamber, The Quest for the Hall of Records, and it is uh, published by Century Books, but we'll be back with Robert for another 10 minutes after the news. Well, on 10.89 and 10.53 a.m., your team leader talks for... OK, welcome back. Our last hour of uh, Programme of the Week. We'll be back uh, 5 o'clock on Monday morning with our early breakfast show repeats of some of the highlights of the shows, if there is such a thing. Or maybe some of the worst bits of Wales. You know, we have some of the worst shows we've ever done. Uh, rebroadcast 5 o'clock before, of course, the fabulous breakfast show with... Uh, it'll be on on, uh, on Monday? Yes, you guessed it, Mr. Alan Brazil, back nice and early at 6. Uh, tonight, for the next couple of minutes, though, we still have uh, Robert with us in the studio. Now, um, the... The book that he has out, which is called Secret Chamber, is... Uh, you've missed the whole interview, really, because we're nearly at the end. The Secret Chamber, the quest for the Hall of Records, which is uh, Robert Gouvel's uh, latest book. Uh, and nobody's asked the question, so I'm going to ask the question, really. What do you expect to find in this chamber? What do you expect to find behind that door? Uh, when and if you ever find it? Yeah. Well, let's be optimistic. Uh, there has been lately rumours... Uh, unfortunately, rumors, but nonetheless, coming from good sources, that the Egyptians will attempt an opening of the door in uh, 2001. Why? Why all this build-up to it? Is this is this to improve the tourism or what? What do you think? Uh, perhaps, uh, partly because uh, I think mainly is that uh, the the thing has become such a hot potato mm. uh, that nobody wants to take the decision in case. Uh, things go wrong or, or, or it's a flop. You know, it's one of those things that uh, catch 22, don't open it and uh, let's not find out or try and open it and, and, and uh, perhaps something goes wrong. But uh, I think the pressure is mounting and, uh, and, and uh, they'll have to open it sooner or later. I think 2001 seems likely. But what's going to be behind it? Well, uh, according to some ideas that I've put forward and more importantly, the latest ideas that, seem, that uh, Rudolf Gantenbrick, the discoverer, has, has put forward is that the entrance, uh, the main part of the, of, the, of the shaft is not the lower part leading to the chamber of the queen that we know, but in fact the upper part, that this was somehow a place of starting. Uh, we both expect uh, that some sort of chamber very large, probably the same size as the Queen's Chamber, will be there. Now, my guess, like I said, is that it will contain, among other things, uh, uh, hopefully tablets, which are the so-called writings of thought. Uh, I've explained earlier in the interview that uh, this is what seems the likely, uh, the, the most likely find. Mm. Uh, but no, uh, nothing prevents the possibility of, of a sort of Tutankhamun type of discovery. Uh, the, and nothing from the king who built this pyramid has ever been found. So you think it possibly could be the king who built this pyramid? Uh, if it is, we're in for the biggest find in history, which will completely overshadow the Tutankhamun find. Because we're dealing with, with one of the most <coughs> prominent and, and, and powerful king of Egypt. Did you ever look on the face of Tutankhamun? Did I ever look yeah. at the face? Of the mummy? Or not? Oh, yes, indeed, yeah. Because yeah. apparently your, your, your um, bad things happen to you, curse, when you do that. You know, I'm still alive, and uh, many people have looked at this face, are still alive. But there were stories of all sorts of people who, who did the guy, discovered him, the bloke who brought him out. Uh, they all had mysterious deaths and everything else. You know, I mean, we all die sooner or later, and uh, it, it's one of those things that the, 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 it happened that many of them were, were, were on their way. Mm. Uh, but, for example, uh, 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 Howard Carter, who was the discoverer of the tomb, lived to a ripe old age, so, uh, you know, if anybody should have gone with the curse, it should have been him. Okay. Uh, Steve in Liverpool, you're on the air. Hi, Steve. Hi. Uh, thanks, James. Um, uh, hi, Rob. Uh, the thing hi. was, I was just going to uh, ask, actually, the question about what do you expect to find. <laughs> but were you part of a team that uh, did, uh, like, a seismologist and an uh, astronomer uh, who did some research regarding the um, tomb or chamber underneath the Sphinx? Yeah, in fact, it was an American team. I wasn't part of it. Oh, right. right. There was two explorations. The very first one took place in 93, and it was John West and, John Ro West, yeah. and the Bostonian uh, uh, geologist, uh, Robert Schock. Mm -hmm. uh, they went, in fact, to examine the weathering of the Sphinx, as I said earlier, but uh, while they were doing that, they used seismograph, and they, they feel very strongly that they've detected 
a possible chamber under the front paws of the Sphinx. That's it, yeah. Uh, now, in 1996, another team came over. Uh, again, a bunch of Americans led by a gentleman called Robert uh, uh, Joseph Shore. And uh, they, uh, t since we're talking about, Flo well, since the big focus is on Florida these days and the American elections, <laughs> this team comes from the Florida University. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, used radars, not seismographic uh, equipment, and they detected a large cavity underneath the rump of the Sphinx. Right. Uh, and they feel that there is a tunnel leading uh, away from that cavity uh, to, the, to the back of the Sphinx, some 200 yards, and may be connected to a large uh, tomb underground that has been discovered very recently. So all this is in the, uh, in, uh, on the burner, and, uh, you know, we, we've got this bizarre Catch-22 situation where the Egyptians say, well, prove to us that there is a chamber under the Sphinx and we'll allow you to open it. And these guys say, okay, we've, we've shown you the evidence with the radars, and the Egyptians say, no, because we can't see it and nobody can be sure, and it goes on and on. So, you know, I don't so know what... So definitely, definitely a chamber there. Well, there's definitely cavities, but yeah. the, the, the radar cannot confirm... Uh, it, just just uh, as, a, as a matter of interest, you know when um, the Sphinx originally was built and you're saying about the weathering, because basically they thought it was an oasis uh, and it was weathered by water and not um, the yeah, elements, the other elements. Yeah. Uh, would it not be possible if it was an oasis, then there may be a cavity under there that's naturally happened through erosion through water? Well, uh, indeed, I mean... Uh, not purposely built for yes. treasures or whatever. Yes, indeed. I mean, that's, of course, the, 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 the uh, possibility, and that's one of the reasons why the Egyptians are reluctant. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, there is a lot of uh, evidence, and, and not just the radars. I mean, I've shown in Keeper of Genesis, my, my second book with Graham Hancock, mm -hmm. that if one deciphers the, uh, the, 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 the message that seems to be in grafted in within the architecture of the monuments mm -hmm. and we use astronomy to do that uh, you come with a strange conclusion that they seem to tell us that there's something very important under the sphinx that has to do with the origins of the civilization uh, if we're right and if the raiders are right uh, then uh, it, there's something there so you know we keep saying you know there's plenty of smoke and if it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck there must be a duck there you know yeah well you know the um, the other thing is queen nefertiti um there's uh, you know the great book of the dead um, uh, scripts, you know, from that or hieroglyphics were found on some pillars uh, relating to the uh, the Book of the Dead, and um, yeah. the, apparently the messages that were on that were like um, thousands or well, let's say hundreds of years before Queen Nefertiti, um, saying about the, um, the the great race before their race, if you know what I mean, before Nefertiti. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure which text you're referring to, but the Egyptians themselves, uh, in many of the texts, speaks, uh, they speak of a earlier golden age, Yeah. which uh, they refer to as the age of the gods. That's right, yeah. But they speak of this age not as if it's some sort of uh, myth or legend. They, they seem to be speaking of it as, as some historical period. Well, that's, that's what I mean, because yeah. in, 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 in the, the, the deciphered text, it says that, like, as in the, uh, you know, as if it was saying, as in the book of the dead, or in the scriptures of the, the great gods in the past. So there must have been something there for them mm. to have actually written you know, that. I'll give you the bottom line of all this. You know, uh, the big question now is whether the Egyptologists who have interpreted those texts are right. Uh, or whether the ancient Egyptians themselves are right. And, you know, I, I'd rather go for the ancient Egyptians. They, they, they seem to be very clear as to, uh, as to their history. And that they speak of a much earlier period. Uh, and and, and they're, they're very adamant about this. Now, we either dismiss this, as, as the Egyptologists do, or we take it seriously, even though... I must admit that evidence is, is scarce, but, you know, many things have cropped up. Uh, I come from, from a city, uh, I was born in Alexandria, and, uh, you know, if one goes on the evidence, that city never existed, because there's nothing left. And yet this city, as we know, uh, was there, and, uh, and, and, and rather a glamorous city as that. So, uh, you know, there we are. Okay, we've got to move on. We only have a couple more minutes and uh, one or two more calls. Steve, thank you very much indeed for that. Sadia is uh, Egyptian. She's in London. She wants to talk to you now. Sadia, hi. Hi, James. How are you? I'm good. You're okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Robert? Yes, hello. 
Mesela ne olur? Mesela ne olur? I did speak in English, shall I? Please. I did climb, I did climb the Great Pyramids when I was about 13. Uh -huh. And I went with a guy who was about 18. And he asked me to go to, to the chamber with him. But as you know, uh, you're not allowed to go with the young men. You know what I mean? Yeah, which chamber, sorry? You know the pyramids. You, you want to know if there's a chamber there. There is one. Yeah. Uh, you, Sadie, turn your radio down because uh, I can hear it in the background and yeah. uh, it makes it very difficult. Yeah, what I understood is that you climbed the pyramid with a guide when you were a young uh, girl and uh, and then what happened? He asked me to go to the chamber you know, to have a look and I said no. Oh, he, he said that there was yeah. a secret chamber or something yeah, there. And it was there. It was there. Huh? Yeah, and it took us 20 minutes to climb up the top and it took us 15 minutes to come down. Well, you should have gone. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Well, you, you know how it is. I mean, young girls shouldn't go. With, yeah. You know, young men were yeah. not being seen. You know what I mean? Yes, That's I do. A, a shame so. you'd have made lots of money if you discovered it. Thank you, Sadia. Uh, last call. Charlie is in Derby in the Midlands. Hi, Charlie. Um, hi. Yeah. Hi. Right. Um, the question I want to ask is, because I've done a lot of research on Egyptology, um, there's a book by Professor Martin Bernal, out of Africa, Yes. I don't know if the guy knows it. Uh, sorry, I haven't read it, no, but go on. Right, but basically, I just want to know about the origins of the ancient Egyptians. You want to know about the origins of about ancient, ancient Egyptians, i.e. racial grouping? Racial grouping of the ancient yeah. Egyptians. You know, th this this is a is a is a much discussed uh, subject, far too complex to go through it now. But uh, there's been suggestions that they may have come from, from Africa. Or, or, I mean, Egypt is in Africa, but rather from Central Africa. Uh, the most accepted suggestion is that they came from what is today Libya. Uh, so we really don't know. But from their racial type, uh, the, the Egyptians are very unique in themselves. They, they, are, they are a people that... You know, if you go to Egypt today... And you look at the Egyptians, uh, and then you go and uh, wander around the tombs, and you see the pictures. They amazingly are the same, you know. And you, 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 all you have to do is dress them differently, and they look the same. So um, I, I do not go for. Uh, I mean, there's been a fad lately uh, started that the uh, Egyptians were, were Negroes and so forth. There, there is, I mean, you know, without being um, uh, difficult one way or the other. But there is no evidence. Certainly, there must have been a lot of blacks uh, at one stage, in, especially in the Middle Kingdoms and the and the Late Kingdoms, because they had contact with Central Africa. But uh, that there uh, that they were predominantly uh, from that race. I do not think so. But uh, they were certainly mixed people. Uh, because um, and because the, the the pictures that you see as well of the ancient Egyptians look very different to Arabs, don't they? Yes, in the fact, features are different. you know, there, there is a misunderstanding about the Egyptians themselves even today. Mm. Uh, the Egyptians are not Arabs by racial origin. They are really Nilotic people, and, and they do look very different from the so-called Semites, mm. which, are, which are the Arabs. Okay. Yeah. We learn everything on this show, and uh, there's more than enough to take in. My brain's had enough now. Uh, Robert, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Uh, it was uh, my bedtime as well. You're, you're <laughs> going to come back with Graham Hancock uh, in the near future and talk about the uh, program that you have going out on Horizon again, indeed. and why you complained to the Broadcasting Standards uh, Council about what happened. Indeed. Uh, and thank you very much indeed. Uh, Robert's book's called The Secret Chamber, The Quest for the Hall of Records. Fascinating. And if you get the hardback co copy, there's some fabulous photographs in there as well. And it is published by Arrow, I think, isn't it? That's yeah. correct. Yes. And uh, thank you once again for coming in. Thank you very much, James. And see you next time. Yeah.